Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. Well, welcome to the Two Hills area where uh, I'm on one of the uh, release sites for the pheasant program and a real pleasure to be joined by Jalen Hewlett, who is one of the uh, uh, folks uh, with the Alberta Conservation Association, a biologist based out of Lethbridge. And uh, he is running the pheasant release program. Jalen, thanks so much for coming out and talking with us today. No problem, it's my pleasure. And it's great to be here. Talk a little bit about how the program has evolved over the years um, to where we are today. Yeah, when ACA first started this program, uh, the goal of it was to increase the hunting opportunity uh, for Albertans across the province to enjoy pheasant hunting. So we've We've expanded our release sites uh, quite a bit over the last number of years, uh, including we have two sites in the Peace River area now, so Northern Alberta, and as well as we've expanded the sites around Calgary and Edmonton to provide uh, that opportunity for, for Albertans in larger urban centres and in areas where pheasants aren't as prevalent uh, to be able to hunt them. So as I understand it, you roughly have 41 sites across Alberta. Are all of those sites um, Alberta Conservation Association conservation properties or are, are there other partners? So we have 41 sites across the province. Uh, the majority of them are uh, conservation sites uh, owned by Alberta Conservation Association, but there is some that are partnered with uh, Pheasants Forever, um, Ducks Unlimited, um, local fish and game clubs, as well as some private landowners in southern Alberta that allow us to release on, on their property and allow open access for the public to hunt. So obviously when folks come to a site like this, um, they're, they're free to park their truck, car, get out, walk onto the site, but when it's on a, a more of a private or controlled land area, um, there are requirements for them to reach out to whoever controls that land. For sure, yeah. So our, our conservation sites are open access, like you said. So the parking lots are, are there for people to park off the road and, and walk in. All sites are foot access only. Um, some of the sites in southern Alberta uh, do require us you, uh, hunters to call in before. Um, and so that's all listed on our website. Um, which you'll be able to, to find if you go to Alberta Conservation Association website. There'll be a pheasant release release website there that has all the information that you need and that are required for each each individual site. Twenty roughly twenty five thousand birds being released this season. Do you folks track at all in terms of the success rate and if there are birds that that can survive i mean obviously this is incredible habitat and i'm sure that's one of the criteria you have but um any idea whether or not we're actually uh i know and i know it's not a name of the program to increase pheasants on the landscape but do they have a do they have a chance so like you said the, the goal of the program is to provide hunting opportunities uh, for albertans uh, but like you said lots of these sites are great uh, habitat for pheasants and other upland game bird species um, we don't have any i guess programs to see the success if if birds overwinter and, and survive or anything like that but you know anecdotally um, i have spoken to a few of landowners around that border these these sites that we release pheasants on and they do s see um, you know increase in pheasants you know throughout the winter and into the springtime. Obviously uh, you know the truck shows up and and releases the birds uh, in, in today there were already hunters on the site so lucky for them I guess uh, but ethically speaking if if you did see the truck and you did see the birds being released I I guess you should maybe it's a good time to have a, a field lunch or a cup of coffee and just relax and let the birds settle eh? exactly yeah so well, if you do happen to see a truck on site uh, like you said it's usually a, a good sign and uh, a lot of happy hunters when the truck rolls up but uh, yeah just a reminder that if you do see it it's it's good to let them do do their work and like you said you know it's a it's a good opportunity to take a break have a drink of water let your dog have a rest and uh let the, the pheasants get released and settled in. And then when the, when the truck you know, leaves the area, it's, you guys can pick back up and continue on hunting. So in terms of other ethical considerations when folks are, are out here, uh, Jalen, what, what other things should they be considering uh, when the truck is on site? 
you know, just because something is legal to do doesn't mean that it's it's ethical and and right to do. So, you know, when you're on site and uh, these these all these sites are open to the public and public access, so they're very busy. Uh, so just be aware of that and cognizant that there is going to be other other folks on the site and other dogs on site. So, you know, if you do see you know pheasants, um, the release truck driver and things like that, just be you know considering uh, of these other people because you know a pheasant harvested isn't isn't worth endangering another hunter or you know a, a dog for that matter right so there's always going to be another opportunity to to have another crack of the pheasant so if, if something you know doesn't feel right you know just uh it's better to not take the shot than than to take it right and, and let's talk about uh bag limits um just because these are um, raised birds uh, delivered to you know property operated by you folks and others um, you still have to respect the regulations that's right yeah so these sites still all fall under the Alberta hunting regulations for for pheasants and other upland game birds for that matter uh, so for pheasants you're allowed to harvest uh, two birds per day uh, that's your harvest limit um, you still have to carry your your pheasant license and and wild wild uh, life certificate um, and everything like that no different than you would to hunt anywhere else I guess one of the uh, one of the neat things about and it's been for the last number of years uh, Jalen is the uh, melanistic uh, bird you you've got about a thousand of these beautifully colored birds I didn't see any on today's release but um, Hey, who knows? They could be. They could be here. Um, what was the what was the driving factor behind that? Like you say, again, we're going to bring up a thousand melanistic pheasants uh, to be released. Uh, they're spread out randomly across the province on all 41 sites. So, it's uh, if you're lucky enough to see one, that's that's great. Um, you know, the goal the the goal of of bringing in these pheasants was just uh, to provide opportunity for for hunters to have a chance to harvest. You know, a, a different looking pheasant. You know, these birds are still in the same uh, species as the Chinese ringneck pheasant. They're just a different color variation is all the difference is. Jalen, thank you so much for coming out here and chatting with us today. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it from uh, up here in the Two Hills area, folks. Um, happy pheasant hunting. Uh, lots of occasions. Um, there's going to be birds released up here right up till the end of October. And of course, the season runs to right around mid-November, I believe, um, across the province. So best of luck to all of you out there. Till next time, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors.